Remember yesterday, the male Karen we could not identify who decided to threaten, physically assault, hurl racial slurs. Well, he's been identified. Let me remind you of the video. Here it is. No way. Get out of my town. Get out of my town. Use my name again. You'll end up in a grave. Use my name again. You'll end up in a grave. Get with all your friends. Just told you what I just said. Say it again. Turn around. Say it again. <laughs> You're gonna call him the N-word? I just called you the N-word. Why? Because you act like one. If you called him name. I'm gonna call Popo. Yes, do please it, do. It's probably your dad. You're gonna oh, fake God. fake phone call. Oh. After you call me the N-word, you're gonna make a fake phone you're call. You're literally in your call. settings. Yes, I have my phone in my hand. I'm doing anything to you. Don't step on my foot. I'm oh, sorry. That's assault. <laughs> and that's assault. I for calling me the n-word that's assault <laughs> i'm a what you. you're a nice guy you. put up the picture for a mask looks like this individual has some connections to local law enforcement very interesting update this particular mayor karen has been identified as john shea the owner of the cape cod bar and eatery Trader Ed's called Million Phillips the N word and also called him a monkey. At the Phillips tried to prevent the bar owner from drinking and driving by calling the police. He also threatened to shoot Phillips in the head. The incident occurred in Massachusetts. This was June 5th. Let me give you the background. Phillips told the Cape Cod Times that he witnessed Mr. Shea drinking and driving while dining at Trader Ed's at 21 Arlington Street. The 24 year old said he saw the owner order a vodka drink and noticed that his car was parked sideways and running in the parking lot. When he and his friends left Trader Ed's, they called 911 to notify them about the drinking and driving before taking a car service to embargo a restaurant and live music venue located on 450, uh, 453 Main Street. About 40 minutes after arriving at Embargo, Phillips saw this same person walking in and dialed 911 again to notify them. The group then decided to leave. And while outside, they notified officers from the Barnstable Police Department who were on the scene to help another person, a woman who had fallen outside the restaurant. I just didn't want John Shea to hurt anyone, said Phillips. That was really the only reason I said something. About 10 minutes later, Mr. Shea confronted Mr. Phillips outside of Embargo as the group waited for their ride share. And that's when he called him the N word. Phillips told WCVB Channel 5 Boston. That Shea also called him a monkey and threatened to shoot him in the back of the head. Mr. Shea clearly holds power and leverage in what goes on in this town, said Galloway. It was absolute, absolutely heinous. The situation isn't a possible hate crime, it is a hate crime. There's more. Shea reportedly apologized on Facebook, okay, saying, and I quote, This is not my character. And I will apologize to your friend too. He claimed while also accusing Phillips of making disturbing comments about pictures of Shay's daughter displayed inside Trader Ed's. The bar owner also told News Center 5 that there are two sides to every story, but declined to comment further, citing the advice of his lawyer. The Cape and Island District Attorney's Office is reportedly investigating the Incident after the video was shared on social media. Barnstable Police Chief Matthew Sonnabend and Cape and Islands District Attorney Robert Galloway announced today that they are investigating the matter also, widely reported by media. Okay. The media outlets and on social media platforms allegedly involving the owner of a local business known as Trader Ed's. Phillips, Mr. Phillips, the victim, said the police did absolutely nothing to protect him from the owner. If the roles had been reversed, 
he says, I'm positive the outcome would have been different. It's, it was pretty disappointing. All right, let's go down the rabbit hole here. If it had not been for the coverage of this, you get absolutely no investigation. So let's start there. These individuals unanimously agreed that Mr. Shea was dangerous and dangerous enough to where they needed to alert 911, the local authorities. Actually, that is a responsible thing to do according to the police. The police are the ones who encourage individuals. If you see something, say something. If there's a hazard on the roadway, that hazard could harm or kill someone else. So they decide to engage in that particular operation, alerting 911 that there is an individual intoxicated driving and noticeably not able to do so. Well, maybe this is just speculation. Maybe 911 or an officer or somebody he knows told him this was happening. It is interesting to me that out of everything that happened, He was never arrested at all. And there's no indication that he caught a ride share or abandoned trying to drive his vehicle. After the incident went viral, after coverage, we covered it yesterday. We didn't even know his name yesterday. All of a sudden, the police are investigating, the DA is investigating, and some other agency is investigating. What will happen? With the investigation. Well, if we just stop paying attention, thinking an investigation is the goal or the, you know, the victory, it goes away for Mr. Shea. They continue to move on, business as usual kind of stuff. So the reason these things become important in the societal context is because they happen routinely, where one individual is given a particular privilege. And another one not. What Mr. Phillips said is striking and strikingly true. If it had been the other way around, the outcome would have been completely different. And why is there an investigation when I clearly see an assault happening on video? Why is there an investigation when clearly we see one man threaten to kill another and his friends? All of these are crimes. All right, Jordan, thoughts. Have you ever been to Cape Cod for one? I'm curious oh, if you've yeah. ever been there. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sure you had the same observation that I did when I went, which was after a day, the only people I had seen were white and it was just striking. I hadn't seen anything really like that. Yep. So that's not really surprising when you hear about this case, this behavior. And what seems like conversations or I don't want to say collusion, but some sort of friendly relationship between this guy and the police. In some of the coverage, they said that the guy came out of the bar explicitly looking for this young man who called the police on Shay. Yep. How would he know who did that and where he was from? He specifically said, where's that person from Boston? I don't think that's exactly what he said, but he he knew where he was from and that yep. someone did it. When you look at that culture, you could see like how white supremacy and that culture pervades in areas like this, where it is, you know, it is a almost a monolithic part of Massachusetts and people who are not white do not look like them, don't have the same class privilege. They're not welcome and they're treated like this. Absolutely. If, if roles were reversed, this would have a much worse and extremely negative outcome. Who knows? Who knows what would happen? So I, I'm glad that those kids made it out of that situation safely and okay. And I hope there's accountability, but I'm not, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, it is interesting because in order for police to share this information with him, that would mean a whole lot of people were involved from the 911 operator to an officer, to probably some level of supervisor getting in touch with Mr. Shea to tell him directly, here's what has happened, here's who they are. That puts individuals who are witnesses to a crime in danger. We will follow this story as it continues.